Hello and welcome back fans of MTG Burgeoning. It is Sunday, so that can only mean one thing here at MTG Burgeoning. Sunday is fun day. That's right, folks. Here we are with our favorite changeling host, Morphin the Boundless. And today we are going to continue with our Rat Deck series. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic. Last time that we met on a Sunday fun day, the community was tasked with selecting which group of rats will be represented in our Morphin the Boundless EDH Commander Rat Deck. The results are in, and we are going to install Rat Colony. There were pros and cons to either selection of rats and we went based upon the number of votes and the majority went with rat colony and i think for the purposes of what we're going to do with this deck rat colony is going to be a strong pick although i will be honest we could have went either way relentless rats would have been just as fine but we're going to go with the rat colony so we don't know exactly how many we're going to include we got a stack here we'll put the stack of rat colony off to the side and as the series moves closer to its conclusion we'll know exactly how many rats we're going to put in we got to go at least a, a couple dozen here i mean we have to, have to make sure that the rat colony is well represented throughout the 99 in this deck so we have our general. We have the rats that we're going to build around. So let's throw in our core 10 cards that's going to help us do some very deranged, warped, almost perverse things that this deck is going to do. You're going to get a lot of what we're going to be doing as we get through with these 10 cards. So let's start right away. First card that we're going to include, we're going to throw a Jet Medallion in here. For all our black spells are going to cost one less to play. And with Jet Medallion and Morphin the Boundless in play, that's going to make sure that our Rat Colonies, which cost one and a black, well, those are going to be free to cast. So Jet Medallion is card number one. Number two, on theme with what Jet Medallion does, we're going to include one copy of Herald's Horn. It's an artifact for three. When it comes into play, we will choose a creature type that will be rats, of course, and spells we cast of the chosen type will be one colorless mana less to cast. So that gives us what Jet Medallion will do. But additionally, at the beginning of our upkeep, we'll look at the top card of our library, and if it's a creature card of the chosen type, which will be rats, of course, we reveal it and put it into our hand. With the number of rats that are going to be crawling around this deck, we should very easily be drawing an additional card on the majority of our upkeeps. So Harold's Horn is card number two and a fantastic card to add to this Morphin Rat deck. All right, card number three, another artifact, and we're going to throw in Bantu's Monument. Three to cast, it comes down to play as a legendary artifact. Black creature spells we cast cost one less to cast. Again, with Morphin in play, that will make all of our rat colonies free to cast. And whenever we cast a creature spell, each opponent will lose one life and we will gain one life. Make no mistake about it, folks, Bantu's Monument is going to act as a win condition for this deck. More on that in the coming series. All right, next card up, we are going to include a copy of Alluren. Two and two green. This is an enchantment from Tempest that reads, any player may cast a creature with total casting costs three or less whenever they could play an instant and without paying its mana cost. So, yeah, in a way, this could help our opponents. I mean, I, as a deck-building principal, don't generally like to include cards that can help out opponents. I try to steer clear of that in a lot of the things that I do and a lot of the decks I put together. However, the amount that this is going to help our opponents will not help them out as much as it's going to help us out because we are going to have dozens of creatures with which Aluren is going to synergize. And if for some reason we're having trouble keeping Morphin in play, in addition to his hefty casting cost of 7 and any of the um, aforementioned artifacts down there, having a Lurin in play will give all of our rats, particularly the rat colony, the ability of flash and a free spell. 
So Alluring is a nice little backup plan in alternate win condition if Morrison attracts more attention than he should. All right, so we're making our way to number five and our fifth card. We're going to add 10 in this series. This is going to act as the core of our Rat Colony Morphin deck. And card number five is going to be Thrumming Stone. Another legendary artifact. This one has a CMC of five and it gives spells we control ripple four. Now this ripple uh, mechanic was introduced back in Cold Snap and has not seen a further reprinting of this mechanic. And what Ripple 4 is, is whenever we play a spell, we may reveal the top four cards of our library, and we may play any revealed cards with the same name as the spell without paying their mana costs. And then the rest of the cards we put on the bottom of our library. So for the purposes of Rat Colony, we would cast a Rat Colony, we would reveal the top four cards of our library, and any rat colonies that are in the, any of those four cards will also be able to be cast. So what we're looking to do is to set off a chain reaction with Thrumming Stone in play, casting a rat colony, and then just having rat after rat after rat enter the battlefield through the Ripple 4 mechanic. So minimally, minimally, we have to include at least 24 to 25 rat colonies. It's going to be more than that, I can assure you, because we do not want to whiff with the Thrumming Stone activation. But please, please do not downplay this card. Thrumming Stone is going to act as one of our win conditions. And can you imagine the power of having Alluren and Thrumming Stone in play at the same time with a handful of rats? Game's over, folks. The game is going to be over. All right, so those are the first five cards that are going to make up the core of this deck. Now let's move on to the bottom five. And here's a card that no one that's <laughs> sitting at the commander table, no one is going to expect this card coming. And that's going to be Blood Bond March. It's from Original Ravnica. It's an enchantment to a black and a green. And whenever a creature spell is played... Each player returns all cards with the same name as that spell from his or her graveyard to play. So this is not going to see a great deal of EDH play, if any at all, outside of a dedicated rat deck or maybe uh, persistent per petitioners or Shadowborn Apostles, because no one's playing with multiple copies of the same card. This is Commander. That is not generally allowed. Enter Rat Colony, where, of course, a deck can have any number of cards named Rat Colony. So if we have a bunch of our rats in the graveyard and we cast a Rat Colony, guess what? Those rats are coming right from the graveyard right back into play. And this is going to become even more warped when we start seeing some of the cards that are yet to be spoiled in this video. So Blood Bond March is a fantastic addition to this rat deck. Next up we have... Secret Salvage, and this is coming from Ether Revolts, three and two black, sorcery that says, exile target non-land card from our graveyard, and we search our library for any number of cards with the same name as that card, reveal them, and put them into our hand. So how this works is we have a rat colony in the graveyard, we cast Secret Salvage, targeting rat colony, and then we go through our library and just grab any number of rat colonies we can put into our hand. And hopefully we have one of our CMC reducing artifacts in play in addition to Morphin, and then we just cast a ton of them. Or maybe we have an Alluren in play already. Secret Salvage gives us, an, uh, an, a, gives us a way to get a ton of rats from our library into our hand. And next up, similar to a Blood Bond March, we're doing with some Rat Graveyard Recursion, but it's not exactly the same thing. We're going to include a copy of Immortal Servitude. This is a sorcery with Orzhov Hybrid Mana, originally from Gate Crash, and it says return each creature card with converted mana cost X from our graveyard to the battlefield. Rat Colony just has a CMC of two, so for a combined five mana, <clears throat> excuse me, we can return every single Rat Colony from our graveyard right to play. Now, I mean, we could go as far as for five CMC, we could just include a copy of Living Death or a copy of Patriarch's Bidding, you know, choosing rats as our creature type. However, we're going to eschew that because why are we going to help out our opponents? 
this is Commander. I mean, people live in their graveyards, and we're not going to include a living death or a patriarch spitting, which could help our opponents flood their own battlefields with creature cards from their graveyard. So we'll just stick with Immortal Servitude, we'll commit our five mana, and we'll bring back all of our rat colonies right from the graveyard. Card number nine, let me just shift these over just a little bit. Card number nine is going to be one copy of Altar of Dementia. The originally printed in Tempest, artifact that costs two when we can sacrifice a creature, and target player puts a number of cards equal to that creature's power from the top of their library into their graveyard. So it is inordinately difficult to mill people in the AD, in the EDH format. I mean, we're dealing with card, we're dealing with decks that begin with 99 cards. And some players are, you know, they're privy to that particular type of strategy and will include Kozilek, Butcher of Truth, and Ulamog the Infinite Gyre that once they hit the graveyard, the library, or once they hit the graveyard, the graveyard shuffles back into the library as a way in which to prevent milling. And that's okay, because as we've already seen with some of the graveyard recursion spells that we have with Blood Bond March and Mortal Servitude, Altar of Dementia could be used to target our opponents, but it can also be used to target our own library. More rats in the graveyard make spells like Blood Bond March and Immortal Servitude that much more powerful. So Altar of Dementia is in as card number nine of the core of this Morophon Rat deck. And our last card for today, card number 10, Phyrexian Altar. Originally from Invasion, this is an artifact that has a CMC of three, and you sacrifice a creature to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Now, this artifact can synergize with so many of the cards that we've already previewed in this in this little video here. So let's just set this Phyrexian Altar down here for a moment. Now, by sacrificing a rat to the Phyrexian Altar, we get a black mana back. If we have a Jet Medallion or a Herald's Horn or a Bantu's Monument, technically we're going to be able to cast any rat colonies for free. If we have a Blood Bond March in play, we're going to sacrifice a rat. It's going to go to the graveyard. We're going to use that black mana to cast another rat. And once we do, we're going to bring all of our rats back into play from our graveyard. Therefore, allowing us to sacrifice more rats to the Phyrexian Altar, getting more mana, casting another rat from our hand, bringing them all back into play. You see how this is going to become even more and more warped with cards like Thrumming Stone, and it just gives us the ability to create an immense board presence with a ton of mana from Phyrexian Altar, bringing the creatures back time after time again with cards like Blood Bond March and Immortal Servitude. Phyrexian Altar is going to act as a cornerstone to a lot of what we're going to do with the rats in this deck. And that's going to do it for today, folks. We have chosen Rat Colony. Morphin the Boundless is going to be its general. This is the core 10 of the deck. Where do we go from here? Leave me some suggestions in the comment section below. This is MTG Burgeoning. It's Sunday Funday, and we are building Rat Colony with Morphin.